The longest border in the world is kind of strange. It goes on for thousands and thousands of miles in like a straight line. And there's a bunch of weird little details about this line that I'm becoming quite curious about. This is the border of the United States and Canada. Yeah, I know, two Canada videos in a row. I'm just really into Canada lately and Canada's got some weird stuff going on and it's kind of this like neighbor to the north that no one ever talks about because it's seemingly just not that interesting but it actually is really interesting. That's what I'm here to tell you. So, let's do this. How's it looking up there, Dr. Chris? I spent the weekend in Vancouver, BC, hanging out with some friends, our friends Chris and Lizzie and Becky and Chris who are just gems of people. Really fun to hang out with, very talented creators. Is, what are we up to? Where are we, what's going down? You can say it loud. Oh. Izzy, say it loud. You're gonna okay. mouth, we're getting ramen, but I'm gonna say okay, it ready, in my voice, ready. Ready? Okay, go. Three, two, one. We're getting ramen. Oh, that worked out like really well. <laughs> and there was lots of FPV drones. Uh oh, did you just crash it? I'm so far away. <laughs> You hear it? And while on this trip, one of the things I did while we were driving around is what I always do, which is pulled out my phone and started looking at the map of where we were. And I just started to get really curious about this line, this straight line that goes on for thousands of kilometers. It's like 6,500 kilometers worth of line on the map. And I've always just ignored this line as kind of like, oh, that's just like the boring line that separates these like two countries that are like best friends and have no tension, no drama, or nothing interesting about this line. It's just straight and boring, is what I always thought. Then the rabbit holes began. There's actually some really interesting stuff about this line, like, weird enclaves and like a Skype border patrol and all this stuff that I'll explain in just a second. But first, let's remember why I'm here. I came to explore and to have a good time with my friends. <laughs> okay, so back to this line. There's a whole history here. I don't know if you're interested in a history lesson right now. I'm not. So let's just put it this way. A lot of Canada used to be owned by the French. Fought some wars with Britain. They lost the wars and they were kind of like, nah, we'll just like kind of surrender Canada. French writer Voltaire kind of hated Canada, said it was quote, just a few acres of snow. So the British take over Canada. The United States is starting to expand to the south. They want to take over tons of land. They want to go north and take over Canada, but the British don't really want them to take over Canada and they fight and they end up not taking over Canada. And eventually they establish a line between the north and the south that says this is Canada and this is the United States through a bunch of treaties, they determine exactly where the line's gonna be. There's one number that completely determined how this border would look. And that number is actually the, the same name as this coffee shop that we're in right now in Vancouver. 49th parallel. I had this big vision of sitting on this log. I don't think it's gonna work. Oh. Am I contributing to erosion with all of this traipsing through the woods? <clears throat> Here they go, they've got a line, they've got a number, the 49th parallel. This is like the 1800s, they don't have GPS. In fact, they don't have any precise tools for actually measuring what that line looks like when you're in the mountains of Canada. So they send a bunch of people out with string. They made a bunch of straight lines that were supposed to go along the 49th parallel. And I mean, they did a pretty darn good job for just like using string and compasses. I'm actually pretty impressed, but not surprisingly, if you zoom in to this very straight line, you'll see that there's actually a little bit of a zigzagging going on. The border doesn't actually go perfectly along the 49th parallel. To demarcate the border, they put thousands of these stone markings, and then they also, to make Make it very clear, cut a gap in the trees that's like 20 feet wide. It's kind of a bizarre looking thing, especially from space. You just see this like gap in the trees. So by the end of it, continental United States is going to be south of the 49th parallel. 
and Canada would be north of the 49th parallel. This is a great thing when you're looking wide at a map, but nature isn't super good at straight lines, which is why when we draw borders, it kind of clashes sometimes with how the world actually works. And so you get some weird stuff. First, over here in Vancouver. Zoom into Vancouver and you'll see this little peninsula. This little peninsula is great, just like any other peninsula, but look what happens when you draw the 49th parallel through it. This is Point Roberts. It's a little enclave that belongs to the United States because it's south of the 49th parallel, but you can see that it's like should be in Canada. It's cut off from the US. This little town of like 1,500 people is strange because there are people living there who are US citizens. They belong to the state of Washington. They have a little elementary school in this village, but what they don't have is anything above an elementary school. So anyone who wants to go to school has to get on a bus, go across the border into Canada, all the way around like 40 kilometers or something like that, back into the United States, go to school, and then back across into Canada and back into the United States. It's like four border crossings in one day. Sounds like a nightmare. Listen, I know we're talking about the US-Canada border and everything, but just take a minute to look at this mossy green forest that I'm in north of Vancouver. It's just the most magical thing I've ever seen. I'm so far away. <laughs> <laughs> you hear it? Is everyone convinced that moss is the greatest thing in the world yet? Yeah, of course. On the record? I was on board. Yo. <laughs> yeah, you've been on board Show since the, the beginning. I was on board from the beginning. <laughs> You're on board now, I'm hater. On board. I've got everyone on board. The whole time. Shut up, Becky. <laughs> okay, so back to this line. Keep going down the straight line, and eventually you'll hit an area where the whole straight line 49th parallel thing doesn't really work as a place to draw a border. The treaty says that as soon as this 49th parallel hits this lake, it's called Lake of the Woods, that the border would need to trace the northwest corner, meaning the upper left corner of this border, and then continue onward. But there was a problem. The map they were using to draw this border was kind of bad and inaccurate, and so it made the lake look a lot more like round and like cleaner and like more in line with their vision for the border. But then when they went to actually survey it, they realized that this northwest corner, the upper left, was actually way up here. Making the border have to go up to fulfill the terms of the treaty and then continue onward. From there, it starts to follow rivers and it goes into the Great Lakes and it's a little more complicated. But in the process of going up to fulfill the treaty and hitting the upper left of this lake, you get this. This little blob of land is appropriately named the Northwest Angle. It's the only piece of the continental United States that is north of the 49th parallel. There's a couple hundred people who live there, and if they want to get in and out of their community, they have to go to this little booth and they have to video call, like Skype the border patrol to like report that they're coming in and out and declare whatever stuff they want to bring in and out. It's so cool. It's like Skype border patrol. Sounds cool. I should do that someday. We went into this seaplane in Vancouver and we flew over all of these islands. And I started to realize that while it works to draw these really straight lines in like the middle of Canada, when you get to the east and the west coast in the Canada region, you start to get a lot of little islands. Lots of water weaving in and out of islands, cutting them all up, and that's hard to draw lines through. Luckily, on the west coast, they were able to not stick with the 49th parallel, which would have cut Vancouver Island just in a weird place. They dipped it down and whatever. But over on the east side, they didn't do that. And you end up with this line. This is Canada. But the only way to get into Canada from here is through this land bridge that goes through the United States. Kind of weird, probably not that big of a deal. In fact, none of these are actually a big deal. Like they're all like kind of goofy, weird 
things, but they don't actually cause like too much inconvenience. Although the high schoolers having to go like through four border crossings every day is actually pretty weird and a huge inconvenience. So I take back what I just said. So it was a great weekend in Vancouver. I loved hanging out with these wonderful people and I learned a little something about this big straight line that I didn't know anything about. And it confirmed to me something that I've learned time and time again, which is some lines on the map look really simple and like they just look like straight lines, but you zoom in enough, you'll always find weird stuff. So it's always interesting to zoom in. That's, I guess, the, the moral of the story. Anyway, thanks for watching. All right, I'm gonna do an ad now about something that I care a lot about, which is Audible. I listen to a lot of Audible, and I have since 2011. I have this giant library of now hundreds of books that really have changed my world since I'm able to read a lot more. I'm dyslexic, so reading is like a difficult thing for me. And now I listen to books and it really has changed my life. I know it sounds like dramatic, but it's actually true, but I'm not gonna go into it anymore. Audible is a giant repository of like more audiobooks than any other library in the world. It's really great. If you sign up with Audible, you get a free book every month. One of my favorite parts about Audible is if you start a book and it's not for you, you can like easily exchange it and return it and get a new one. Plus two Audible originals, which is like their original content that you can choose two of every month. For people who go to audible.com slash Johnny Harris, J-O-H-N-N-Y-H-A-R-R-I-S, you get a book for free. You get a month free of this a book and two pieces of content for free, zero money. You can try it out, see if you like it. You can either go to that URL, audible.com slash Johnny Harris, or you can text Johnny Harris with no spaces to 500, 500, and it'll send you a link. One that I just finished is Sapiens, which completely changed my entire perspective on the planet and the history of humanity. Fantastic book, you should check it out. So, audible.com slash Johnny Harris, or you can text Johnny Harris to 500, 500, and you will get a free month of Audible a free book and two of these originals. It's a killer deal, it's a no-brainer for me. That's why I work with Audible, because I believe in it. So thank you for watching and thank you Audible for sponsoring this video. Have a good day.